Hi, this is Moki Makura, and today we're chatting to Peter van den Steen, who's the MD of Bateman. He's an engineer, and he's going to tell us why he did an MBA. It's the age-old question. You're an engineer, and you did an MBA. Are you going to rule the world? That is such a radical statement. <laughs> <laughs> no, in engineers with the MBA are not going to rule the world, and uh, it's not going to happen for a long time. But it's a but pretty do. intimidating combination. You know why engineers do an MBA? Why? So they can get a personality. <laughs> and did you get a personality? I think I got a personality. I think okay. Nick Benadel hammered that into me over a period of two years. <laughs> what else did the MBA give you? The MBA has taught me a new language which I didn't know before I before I uh, came to Gibbs. Um, it's a language of business, it's a language of general management. Um, it's terminology and issues that you need to deal with when you're in management that are foreign before you even embark on an MBA. Even if you're an engineer without an MBA in management, there are doors that open to you when you do an MBA that you didn't know existed before. Tell me about the doors. What do you mean doors that are open to you? Um, Concepts on all the subject matters that you have to deal with over the two years become very interesting. Things that you think before may have been extremely boring. Like, for instance, let's take some, something like human resources. Everybody mm -hmm. yawns when you talk about uh, human resources. And the importance of human resources and human resources strategy uh, opens up to you. It, it's, it's, like a, it's like a canvas that somebody mm -hmm. puts up on a wall. You, you, it, the, these are concepts that are completely foreign to an engineer coming from a hardcore engineering environment. And when you then progress in your career to a mm. management position, it still remains a foreign concept. Mm. You do something like the MBA, it opens up to you. You start realizing that you know there is a lot more than designing hardware and putting it on the ground to do some kind of work like processing minerals or whatever. Now tell me, you're the MD of the group that you work for. Mm. Was this something that you were doing before you did the MBA or did you get into that position after the MBA? No. I have to correct you earlier on, I'm not the MD of Bateman Group. I'm the MD of one of the three divisions in right. Bateman and the okay. division that I head up is called Bateman Mineral Recovery. I was working for a company called IST um, at the time when I joined Gibbs to do my MBA. And I was inside turning around uh, distressed projects for IST at the time. And what I did um, over the course of the first two-thirds of my MBA was turning around these distressed projects, closing down divisions, um, retrenching people and doing all sorts of things like that um, to a point where I had physically worked myself out of a job. And myself and the IST board sat down and they said, okay, we'll re redeploy you in the group, uh, but we will understand if you are mm -hmm. going to look around and look at your options. And in fact, the CEO of the group then acted very much as my mentor and put a good word in for me mm -hmm. uh, with some of the recruitment agencies and things like that. And then out of that came a new opportunity, which that opportunity I followed and, and ended up working for the Batman Group. So the decision to do the MBA, it yes. wasn't because you were trying to reskill necessarily for a new job? I did the MBA because I realized my own shortcomings in management and I needed a challenge. And the MBA fitted the bill, very much so. And it is probably one of the best decisions I've ever made, is to do the MBA. Right. And you said it fulfilled your, your shortcomings in management. I mean, can mm -hmm. you talk more, spe more specifically about the sort of shortcomings that you had? <sighs> I've, got to I've got to think about that quite a bit. Um, if, you, if, you, if you look at your environment that you're operating in as, as, as a manager, even as a middle manager, you start... Uh, getting into a position where you're confronted with, for instance, what, shall, what I used earlier on, HR issues, uh, finance issues, um, investment decisions, um, which are approached very differently. Um, and if you're an engineer, you, 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 without an MBA going into management, you might be familiar with a lot of these concepts, you might be dabbling in it, but you lack insight. And the insight comes from doing millions and millions of case studies interacting with a variety of people that you get into touch with on the MBA, which think differently, they come from different backgrounds, dentists, doctors, accountants, entrepreneurs, and it gives you an opportunity to start looking at things uh, through a different set of glasses. Mm -hmm. That is completely lacking before you do the MBA. 
um, you, will, you will develop it over a long period of time if you remain in management, but you will always lack the formal education part of it, which gives you the grounding. Mm -hmm. and, and that is, that you, 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 you realize that. I realized that when I was, well, when well, I was going into management. I realized that I, I didn't have that. But what worries me, Peter, is that you're saying that unless you have an MBA, mm -hmm. it's virtually impossible for you to be a good manager. No, you, you, you can be a very good manager without an MBA, but you are restricted in terms of the skill set that you have available. You have less arrows in your quiver. So you might be a good manager, but you won't be an excellent manager. So has you might be an excellent manager, but you won't be a super manager if, you, if, you, if, you've, done, if you've done an MBA. And there is, there is also the issue of leadership versus management. It's two different concepts. You can be an excellent manager, but you can't, and you might not be a very good leader. And a lot of exposure during the MBA program is uh, on, on the topic of leadership as well, mm -hmm. which, which stretches way beyond management. Tell me, what was the most fun part for you of doing the MBA? And when I say fun, I mean fun. I think some of my alumni are going to shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> I particularly enjoyed the interaction with everybody on the course. That to me was probably one of the most enriching aspects of doing the MBA, is the interaction with such a host of variety, of, 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 of such a host of, of, of different types of people from all races, colors, creeds, backgrounds, education. It was just amazing. And to me, that, that the, the, the informal part of the MBA, uh, the exposure that you get to that is probably the most fun. Peter, thank you very much.